Hey everyone, it's Stacy from My Petite Garden. Welcome back to another video. I hope everyone is staying warm if you live in the Northern Hemisphere. We had a winter snowstorm recently and I decided let's make an updated houseplant potting mix video since so many of you still ask me about what I use in my potting mix. I've done one of these before a long while back and some things have definitely changed but if you're interested in watching that video, I'll link it in the description box down below and if you are interested in any of the items that I use in this video and any other video, 99% of the time it will be linked in my Amazon store and you will find that link in the description box as well. So to start off, I just wanted to say that I use the same potting mix that I make for all of my houseplants because most of them require a very similar type of care and if I so happen to have a plant that might require a different type of potting mix, I will just adjust it accordingly but for the most part, I use this universally. I am using a base of the Espoma Organic All-Purpose Potting Mix. I just bought like a huge 2 cubic feet bag from a local nursery because it is a much better value than getting those smaller bags. Next, I will be adding the amendment to my potting mix, which will include some pumice, which you can also use perlite, vermiculite, or rice hull. Then I will be adding some cocoa coir crotons. Now I'm going to be adding some orchid bark. And then now just a sprinkle of the Osmocote plant food. And then I just mix it and see if I'm okay with the texture. If not, then I'll just keep adding a little bit of each amendment or whichever one I feel like mixing in a little bit more of. And also just a side note, I do not use any specific measurements when it comes to the ratios of each ingredient or soil amendment that I add. I literally eyeball everything until it becomes the texture that I like. And like I always say, trial and error is really the best way to gauge what will work best for your houseplant in your own environment. Now the potting mix that I use is just what I personally like to use so I'm not saying that this is the best type of mix for any specific type of plant but I personally do like using this for my Hoyas, Aeroids, Peperomias um, and then for my succulents and cacti I would just go heavier on the pumice and perlite and less of the um, Espoma organic potting mix. So recently I've been using this reptile bark which is basically fur bark that is for reptile bedding 
I was actually looking for orchid bark that was in smaller sizes and couldn't find any that was the size I wanted and then I came across this which is the perfect size and works really nicely for amending houseplant potting mixes. Now let's repot my Easter cactus together using the new potting mix that we just made. Um, this Easter cactus is severely root bound. I haven't checked in a while but I am pretty sure it is and if you look at the bottom of the pot there's a telltale sign that it is extremely root bound and I think it also lacks some nutrition because the leaves look a little bit chlorotic so I'm hoping that repotting this will bring it back to life for me. It's a relief for me to repot this Easter cactus because I think it's been in this pot for close to two years now. I really haven't checked up on it much or paid much attention to it to be honest with you. Um, so I'm finally giving it the attention that it needs so I'm, I'm happy about it. This time around, I'm going to be using bonsai block as top dressing. I usually just use whatever I have on hand um, as long as it's kind of lightweight and can cover the surface of the soil. Um, I'll just use, you know, things like pumice, um, turfus, even like um, lava rocks, and um, what else? I also use like the smaller sized aquarium rocks. You can use that as well if you like. A lot of people ask me why I use top dressing. It's really just a personal preference, mainly for aesthetic reasons. I like my soil surface to look clean and neat and tidy. At the same time, it can help deter to some level fungus gnats from kind of hovering around the surface. And also, because I use a lot of um, terracotta pots for most of my plants, having a layer of topsoil does help retain a little bit of that moisture. Not too much, but it helps a little bit. So again, it's really just personal preference.
Alright, so that's it for this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it or found it somewhat informative. Um, if you guys have any further questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below and I'll definitely get back to you. And as always, thank you so much for watching and please remember to comment, like, and subscribe. I really appreciate it and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!